Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome this morning to our Zoom church, our online church today. Clive and I are going to lead you through this morning's service, uh, which is going to be a service of confession and repentance. Well, good morning, Clive. Good morning, Rodney. Good to see you again. It's good to see you again today, too. Um, this morning, we're going to be singing uh, a few songs, a couple of songs here. We'll be adding in an extra song, um, which we just have to sing with today's Bible reading. Uh, Emma will be leading our kids' church spot, and we'll, be, uh, we'll see how a couple of blind men saw Jesus far more clearly than most people. We're going to start with our first song, Let Your Kingdom Come. We've been looking a lot about what it means to enter into God's kingdom and who can do that. So we're going to sing, Let Your Kingdom Come. cause, O oh God, engages our hearts. May Jesus Christ be known wherever we are. We ask not for ourselves, but for your renown. The cross has saved us, so we pray. song be heard everywhere on earth till your sovereign work on earth is done let your kingdom come give us your strength God and courage to speak. Perform your wondrous deeds through those who are weak. Lord, use us as you want, whatever the test. By grace we'll preach your gospel till our dying breath. Let your king Come, let your will be done, so that everyone might know your name. Let your song be heard everywhere on earth, till your sovereign work on earth is done. Let your kingdom come, let your will so that everyone might know your name. Let your song be heard everywhere on earth, till your sovereign work on earth is done. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. We're going to go to our kids spot now from Emma, and I think Cameron's joining her too. So let's uh, cross to Emma and Cam. Emma and Cam, are you with us? It is so great to see everyone on the Zoom screen this morning. Um, today in Kids Church, we are going to be learning about Oh. Yep. Ken, what are you doing? I'm trying to do the kids' spot. Got my mates lifting some weights. Building up the guns. Mm -hmm. And why are you lifting weights? I was listening to a comedy Cannon, mm -hmm. and he says, "My God is so big, so strong." And I thought, if I became the strongest, then God will love me. <sighs> 
I don't think that's how it's going to work. Okay. I have a plan B. Great. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying, today in our kids spot, we are going to be watching a video and learning about... Yep. Here we go. What are you doing now? Camera. Oh, sorry. I'm reading these really, really big books. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Right, right. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. We got economics, psychology, anatomy, right? Big books. I figured. I used my brain. God is the smartest and he knows everything. I'm not the smartest and I don't know everything. No. So if I become the smartest, then God will love me. Boom. Knowledge. I don't think that's how it works either. I wonder, maybe Kids Church can help us. If you think Cameron's right and he can become the smartest and then God will love him, maybe you can give us a thumbs up. If you think Cameron's on the wrong track here, maybe you can give us arms crossed like no deal. Have oh, a look at I see one thing. thumbs up. That, that's me. Okay, okay, we're seeing a little right. too many thumbs up. I'm not sure these people have been to Kids Church in a while. <laughs> My brain, I've got a plan C. I'm come back. Great. Okay. Well, while he is gone, um, I might tell you about our kids' church. So today in our kids' church, we're going to be watching a video and we're going to be learning about... Yep. Here we go. Oh. Cameron? Yep. What are you doing? Uh, all right. I'm glad you asked. I went back to the song. Mm -hmm. Colin says, my God is so big right yeah and so i thought if i eat these bananas and take all these vitamins and stretch myself out really tall then i'll become the biggest and the tallest and then god will love me it's, it's got to work yeah no i don't think this is going to work at all in fact i think having a lot of time if you just like all the kids today and listened to the kids spot okay okay right well Finally, as I was trying to say, in Kids Spot today, we are going to be learning about how Jesus was compassionate to two men who were not the tallest or the smartest or the richest or the biggest, um, and how he was compassionate and loving to them. So I might see um, if someone can play the video for us. Our reading takes place from Matthew <laughs> chapter 20, verses 29 to 34. Jesus heals two blind men now as jesus and the disciples went out of jericho a great crowd followed jesus and behold there were two blind men sitting by the roadside and when they heard that jesus was passing by they cried out lord have mercy on us son of david the crowd rebuked them telling them to be silent but they cried out all the more, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. And stopping, Jesus called them and said, what do you want me to do for you? They said, Lord, let our eyes be opened. And Jesus, in pity, touched their eyes. And immediately they recovered their sight and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think we go back to... Um... Okay, Ken. So, um, so, Ken, in those days, life was really different for people who were blind. These days, we have amazing technology. So people who are blind can live great lives with jobs um, and families and all sorts of hobbies. But back then, they didn't have that technology. So often, people who were blind were really poor and they needed a lot of help. They were not the best of at all. We saw in the video that when they called out to Jesus for help, the crowd became really angry because they didn't think that they were good enough to go to Jesus. But Jesus was really kind and compassionate and loving and he healed the men. The story is a great reminder that Jesus shows love to all people and that all people can come to Jesus. So you're saying that I don't need to be the strongest or the smartest or the biggest and tallest to come to God and yeah. for him to love me? Exactly. So anyone can come to God. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Cameron, for sitting down and listening to our talk today. I hope you learned something from it. I think I did. Um, now, 
in our kids church group chat we have sent through some activity sheets for this week so if you don't have access to them feel free to pop a note in the chat and i can send it to you um, we've got a dot to dot to do from today's story we've got a braille challenge so you can have a go at writing the message from today one of our verses in braille um, and we've also got a coloring in sheet to do um, our create challenge for this week is to have a go at creating an obstacle course and it would be really cool if we could send that to the chat as well but i'd love to see everyone's obstacle courses our prayer for this week is to thank God that we can come to him even if we aren't the best of the best. Um, and in our groups today, in our discussion groups, it would be great for everyone to share a time that they've been able to turn to God. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks, Emma. That was wonderful. Well, we're going to sing about the blind man and a few other people that Jesus came across in the song, The Blind Man. Now, the thing about the blind man's song, Clive, is there's actions. Uh, now, it's hard for me to uh, do the actions when I'm playing guitar, but the actions that I remember, because this is an older song, uh, it says, I am the way. So you've got to do a W for the way, uh, the truth, and then you've got to do the life, and then you've got to work out which way an L goes. Does it go this way or this way? So I think it should be backwards for us, which is the right yeah. way for you. That's right. So, so not like life. that, like this. Yeah, Okay. And, and then when you do the uh, 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 you've got to shake your, uh, 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 uh. you got to do that. So anyway, good, so good people at home, <laughs> uh, if you want to have a go at the actions, give it a go. by the road and he cried the blind man sat by the road and he cried the blind man sat by the road and he cried he cried oh, oh, oh show me the way show me the truth show me the light the way to go home baby uh, 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 uh. the crippled man sat by the road and he cried man sat by the road and he cried the crippled man sat by the road and he cried and he cried oh, oh, oh show me the way show me the truth show me the light the way to go home baby ah, 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 ah. Oh, Jesus stood by the road and he cried Jesus stood by the road and he cried Jesus stood by the road and he cried, he cried, oh, 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 I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light, the way to go home, baby, ah, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Very good. Well, we're going to have our Bible reading now, so we're going to cross to Alvin, who's going to bring us our Bible reading. Morning, Alvin. Hey, morning, Clive and Rodney and everyone else. Good to see you. All right. So today's reading is from Matthew chapter 20, verse 29 to 34. That's Matthew chapter 20, verses 29 to 34. As Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered. We want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately, they received their sight 
and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Thanks, Alvin. Great to have you read for us. Well, today we're going to look, I mean, you might have guessed it by now, uh, (laughs) about this story of two blind men. Um, That's why we had to sing the song. We had to sing the song, even though the song, it kind of combines two passages. It's a song about a blind man, but Mm. then it's the story of Jesus in John 14 when he says, I am the way, the truth. And the life. So yeah, I never really questioned that song until uh, recently. Yeah, <laughs> I lived at a beach mission when we used to sing the scooping songs to yeah, get the yeah. kids to come in. That was it's cool. biblical, but it's kind of like mashing together biblical yeah. passages. Yeah. Well, part of the reason why we needed to uh, uh, look at the blind man, or do look at the or sing the blind man song, and part of the reason. Oh, I mean, what about Emma and Cameron really teaching us a bit about? Yeah, you know, all the we what we see is that the blind men actually saw Jesus more clearly than other people. Yeah, that's right. We've seen the rich man who really thought that he could get into God's kingdom by his own goodness, his own power. Yeah, we heard about him a few weeks ago, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. So he was kind of the opposite of the the kind of poor blind man, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, But he was actually blind to his spiritual need, his spiritual poverty. So even though he was rich, which kind of people thought that must have meant that he was blessed by God. Uh, he was kind of powerful because mm. um, he probably was involved in the synagogue and making up the rules for life. Mm. Um, and, you know, he had all this kind of influence and yet for all those, and he even kept God's laws really well, yeah. and yet he still couldn't follow Jesus because he relied on himself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then we saw the disciples last week. Um, they have been giving up everything to follow Jesus, and yet they were still seeking glory and power yeah. um, rather than you know, suffering or serving other people. Yeah, uh, that's something which has come up throughout the whole term, hasn't it? Mm. Right at the beginning of the term, we heard about the disciples saying, well, who's the most powerful? Mm. And then only last week we heard about them saying, uh, two of them saying, can I sit at your right and your left hand? They wanted all the glory, all the power, all the authority, Mm. But they, they didn't actually see themselves submitting to God or, or actually relying on God or mm. a bit like Cam. They thought they could be the strongest and the best and the most powerful. Yeah, that's um, it. And yet they wanted glory without suffering, without submitting, without following Jesus. Mm. Yeah. And I remember Jesus said the first will be last and the last will be first. That's right. We've heard about that <clears throat> in the last three weeks. That's been a theme that's come up stronger and stronger, first and last. Putting, uh, allowing ourselves to be humble and uh, putting God first, not us, uh, allowing ourselves to be humble and thinking of how we love others uh, before ourselves. Yeah. So what's so different about these two blind men? Well, I guess the first thing we see is that they don't follow the crowd. They don't listen to the crowd. Uh, we, the first thing we really see is that all these crowds are following Jesus. And the first thing you think of is, oh, wow, Jesus you know, is doing really well. These crowds are following him. And yet they kind of try to silence these two blind men. Mm. They don't think that these blind men are, are good enough. I mean, have a look at Matthew 20, verse 31. The crowd rebuked them uh, and told them to be quiet. But they shouted out all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. So you see that the well people think that the blind men don't deserve to come to Jesus. They're not worthy. So it's a bit the, like the opposite of, of the rich man. The rich man was wealthy. He looked good. He, you know, he was young and strong and fit, mm. uh, as far as we can tell, in amongst the three passages that he's in. Mm. And so he looks like he's the right kind of guy. These guys would have been poor. They were beggars. Um, and so... They don't really look like the right kind of people. And in fact, people might have even thought, just like the wealthy man looked like he was blessed by God, maybe the blind men looked like they were possibly even cursed by yeah, God. Yeah, punished by God. Yeah. I mean, some people did think, you know, there's another story in John's Gospel where they ask Jesus, who sinned, uh, this blind man or not, not in this story, but a different, no, in the other different story. blind man, mm. uh, him or his parents said that he's blind. So yeah. they kind of associated physical blindness with kind of spiritual punishment. Yeah. 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 So we can see that 
this guy is the uh, these two guys are the opposite to the rich man mm. and the crowds also probably thought well they were worthy so what you got to realize is that the crowds were there not just for Jesus but a lot of the crowds were in Jerusalem for the Passover feast okay so, so there were a whole bunch of religious people even yeah. if they just the average person they were regularly going to synagogues in other parts yeah. of the world yeah. and then they would come like a pilgrimage yeah to yeah. the temple yeah so they were the faithful they were the ones who deserved to see the messiah to see the king um, so the blind men don't let the crowd stop them from coming to jesus okay. they, they don't be quiet they shout out all the more yeah we see them shouting out twice don't they yeah it's they realize they, they need yeah and so i guess it's a, a lesson for us like do we allow others to stop us from coming to jesus mm. Um, do we allow people to shame us or do we feel ashamed to, to kind of be open about our need for Jesus? Mm. Um, but why are the blind men not put off by the crowd? I think it's really because they see their deep need. Um, I mean, unlike the rich man who, who didn't see his need, their physical blindness kind of makes them see uh, their spiritual blindness. So they actually saw their need better than anyone. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they saw better than people who can physically see. Yeah. Um, so they saw something in themselves and something in Jesus mm. that he could offer them. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they've heard about him healing people. Um, yeah. Maybe they'd heard that if he is truly the Messiah, then there's more to him than just this kind of victorious kind of battle king. Yeah, I think a lot of the crowds would think, hey, we're the faithful. This, finally, this Messiah is coming to defeat the Romans, give us our land back, restore us to our glorious position we had before under King David. Um, so they didn't think that they needed salvation from sins. They just needed political, physical salvation. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I think these blind men, what they say is, Lord, have mercy on us. Yeah, Mercy means we don't deserve it. We don't deserve your kindness, your love. Please have mercy on us. Forgive mm. us. Um, so <clears throat> are they only asking to receive their sight? I yeah. Mean, yeah. I think it's interesting. Like often we compartmentalize, you know, do they want physical healing? Do they want spiritual? Do they have a spiritual awareness? But they often went together back then. Like we saw before, the rich man thought he was being blessed by God. Mm. Um, the physical conditions were seen as spiritual poverty as well. So mm. I think they had awareness of their physical and their spiritual poverty, their need for forgiveness. Let's have a look at verse 32. Mm. Shall I read it? Yep. Okay. Uh, it says there that Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered, we want our sight. Yeah. I wouldn't mind being out of my glasses. I remember when I didn't have to <laughs> use glasses to read. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and I think the, the physical and the spiritual are really tied together here. Mm -hmm. um, and these people saw they, they needed Jesus both physically and spiritually. Mm. Um, and I think that helped them to see Jesus for who he really is. Mm. Uh, just in the last passage, Jesus said, the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Um, so he was trying to show them that it wasn't just about political defeat. Uh, it was about uh, spiritual salvation. He had to give his life to forgive us from our sins. It reminds me too of, of the story of, uh, do you remember the story of the, unf uh, oh, sorry, the, the woman who, um, or the woman of faith, she's known mm. as, and she'd been bleeding for a long time and and basically, Jesus was able to cleanse her, infect her with his, I guess, purity. Mm. Because in those days, people that had physical ailments like that or like the blindness, they, if you touch them, then they, they might make you impure. Mm. And the impure. It's a bit like COVID. The impurity gets passed on and now mm. you're infected. Yeah. Whereas Jesus does the opposite. He, um, he kind of infects them with purity. Yeah, with his holiness. With his holiness, yeah. Unheard of, really, isn't it? And so we see them calling out to Jesus, 
for him to give them something that will heal them physically, but also bring about a spiritual cleansing. Mm. Mm. I think that's what we need to learn from this as well. We can only see Jesus clearly if we admit our need. We admit our complete helplessness and our need for him to heal us and forgive us. Well, why don't we have a look at the kindness of Jesus, the compassion of Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Um, we see the wonderful kindness in verse 34. If we have a look at verse 34, it says, Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately they received their sight and followed him. So as you said before, like he's not afraid to, to come close to them. He even touches them and heals them, both mm. physically and spiritually. Yeah, so he comes to them, heals them, and then what do they do once they're healed? Do they just run around or do they go off and get on with life, now? take up a trade? Yeah, they actually follow him. There's like nothing else they want to do in life apart from follow their, their Lord and Saviour, their Messiah. Well, that makes me think again of the rich man. Mm. Because if we compare the rich man, which we looked at earlier, a few weeks ago, and these two blind men, well, the rich man thought he was powerful. Mm. He thought he was good enough for God, but he was blind to his spiritual need and he could not follow Jesus. Yeah. He would not follow Jesus. Yeah, too much to lose, too much to yeah. give up. That's right. It was too much to give up. But then mm. the blind men, they are already humbled, aren't they? Their, yeah. their circumstances have made them humble. Yeah. Um, they, they know that they have only Jesus to rely on mm. uh, if they want to be made well. Yes. Um, and so then they not only come to him and they ask him to approach, well, Jesus approaches them in the end, mm. but they ask for healing, he heals them, and then they don't go anywhere else. They don't live for themselves. They follow Jesus. Mm. Yeah. They've got nothing to offer Jesus mm. and everything to gain. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a beautiful picture of faith as well. We don't come to Jesus able to offer him anything. He doesn't need anything we can give him. Not like the rich man who said, you know, what good thing should I do so I can enter? No, they, they come with an empty, open hand and they receive everything from Jesus mm. and they follow him. Yeah. So in one sense, these guys become the model of humility. Yeah, yeah. Humility and, and faith and seeing Jesus for who he really is. Okay, and how we should respond to him. Mm. Calling out to Jesus for help. Yeah. And I think that's really important for us to think about. Like, have we come to Jesus? Um, have we admit our need? And do we let our shame or our sin stop us from coming to Jesus? Mm. I think we see the beautiful kindness of Jesus here. There's nothing that we have ever done, nothing that we can ever do that will stop us coming to him. Mm. He wants us to come to him, whoever we are, whatever we've done, and he will never turn us away. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, <clears throat> if we are broken, or in our brokenness, we can go to Jesus. Yeah, uh, We know that he can heal us, spiritually broken people. Mm. Um, and we need Jesus to open our eyes spiritually if we want to actually approach him and, and ask him to heal us. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they see what really is true of all of humanity, that all of us are spiritually blind and poor and helpless. Mm. We all need Jesus' mercy. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Clive. I think it's very helpful. I hope that you at home have been helped a little bit by this passage. Yeah. It's a very small passage, but when we start taking it in the context of those three chapters that we've looked over in this last term, we start to see themes that this, this little story picks up on mm. and helps us to understand it. Mm. So don't forget to check out the podcast, which will have the full sermon uh, mm. you can listen to while you're driving or you know, putting the washing out, whatever it is. <laughs> um, but yeah. What an I pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that we're able to uh, spend this time in these three chapters of Matthew in, these, in this last term. We thank you for these stories that help us to learn more about how we need to be humble before you, humble before Jesus, to be like these blind men and, and call out to Jesus for help and not bring anything with us to think that we're going to be able to impress Jesus. Yeah. We pray that our humility would lead us to love God and be ever grateful to him for what he's done for us through Jesus, bringing us salvation. 
and help us to be people who also are humble and show love to one another. We ask that you may help us to do these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to sing our final song, See Him Coming. The blind man will see him coming. That's the good news. And all of us will see him coming. We don't have to be ashamed because he has taken away our sin. So let's sing, See Him Coming. Glory and power to the one who loves us. Honour and praise him forever. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Glory and power to the one who freed us from all our sins by his blood. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. See him coming on the clouds of heaven. Every eye behold him now. He's a living one, the first and last, who once was dead, but now he lives forever and ever. Glory and power to the one who made us a kingdom of priests for God's service. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. See him coming on the clouds of heaven. Every eye behold him now. He's a living one, the first and last, who once was dead, but now he lives forever and ever. Jesus is a living one who died and came alive. Jesus is almighty Lord who was and is to come. Jesus is a living one who died and came alive. Jesus is almighty Lord, who was and is to come. See him coming on the clouds of heaven, every eye behold him now. He's a living one, the first and last, who once was dead, but now he lives. See him coming on the clouds of heaven, every eye behold him now. He's a living one, the first and last, who once was dead, but now he lives forever and ever forever and ever can't wait to that day when we see him coming All right, we're going to uh, have a time of confession and repentance now. Um, and in our passage today, what we read were these words. Uh, we can see them in Matthew 20, verse 30. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside when they heard that Jesus was going by. They shouted, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. The blind men were considered unclean unworthy of coming to Jesus for help. But they didn't let anything stop them calling out to Jesus for mercy. 
And Jesus lovingly helped them. We can sometimes feel like we are unclean, unworthy, not good enough for Jesus. And that is exactly when we need to call out to Jesus for help. Never be afraid of asking Jesus for forgiveness. He is always ready to show us mercy and compassion, just like he did for those two men. And he will forgive us of all the things that make us unclean, unworthy, and not good enough for God. Let's take a moment now to think of the things that we need to confess and to let go of for Jesus to forgive us. Let's now say these words as an act of repentance and confession. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you, you love, love us so much, but we don't always love you. We cause you shame when we don't obey you. We are often proud, but you are good and very kind. Forgive us, make us clean and change us by your kindness shown to us through Jesus. Help us to live for you and to please you in every way. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At the end of the last week's passage, Jesus said in Matthew 20, verse 28, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus paid the price for our sins and has brought us, brought us so that we can be in a perfect relationship with God. Our God fulfills his promises and is true to his word. We have confessed our sins. God has forgiven us because Christ died for us. Amen. We're now going to continue in a time of prayer and we're going to cross over to John Pamant. Hello, John. Hi, how are you going? Good, thanks. Ready to pray? Thank you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we will see you coming on the clouds of heaven, that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. Father, we thank you that in the beginning you said there would be day and night, the seasons, that you made a promise that the world would never flood again. You put the rainbow in the sky. All these things have happened, Lord. Each day they happen, day in, day out. We're so thankful, Father, that you keep your promises and that you are mighty and that we can praise you forever. And we can see why when you were on the earth that people followed you and praised you and shouted, Hosanna, save us, Lord. We can see that, Father, and we, we thank you that we can read your word and know that. But, Father, again, like we've just done, we repent of our sins. Lord, we are so sorry when we turn away from you, when we find ways that we can not obey you. But, Lord, we are so heartened to know that you forgive our sins you take them as far as the east is from the west. They never again will bother us, Lord. But do we accept that, Lord? Help us to accept that and to live that, to know that we are at peace because of you, that your perfect peace is in our hearts and lives. And that's what we truly love and thank you for, Father. And Father, we pray for those of us who are sick or unwell, those of who need physical healing, those that need spiritual healing or mental mentally are unable to cope at the moment, Father. We pray that your hand is upon them, but also, Lord, as we learn that we should be servants and serving them as well. So help us to call those in need or to help those in need. Help us to put ourselves out to, to follow what you have said and what your son did as a, a servant for all of us. Help us to do this, Father. And Father, we pray for the times of COVID that is upon us, for the workers who a front line, the, the paramedics, the hospital staff, but friends or family who are also caring for people with COVID. Lord, help them to, to cope. It must be physically demanding and mentally so straining. Lord, give them the strength to carry on in their jobs and to work. Lord, we pray for those in authority who make the decisions on where we go and what we do. Lord, we pray that they will make wise decisions and that they will listen to the facts and be guided, Lord. Father God, we pray for each one of us that we 
can be supporting each other at church as part of your family that we we love meeting together on Sundays, Lord. And we're thankful that we can keep doing that online. We're thankful that we can keep meeting and sharing and loving each other. We thank you for the kids' stories that people have put a lot of effort into. Yeah. We thank you for the people who are leading the service and talking about things, Lord, from your word. We thank you that they turn up each week for those behind the scenes. We thank you, Lord, that things continue on. Lord, we thank you that you are guiding all things in this world. We might not think that. We might think that it's in turmoil. We might think it's a mess. We see countries where their leaders are, are just killing their people. We see countries where there's just destruction everywhere. We see places that just seem not to be coping. Then we see other countries that think they're doing great. Lord, but you're in charge of all of them. And that is great to know that your hand is upon the whole world and it will all bend the knee to you in the end. That is your plan. That is your purpose. And that's what we're headed towards. So help us to remember that. And to live and pray that, Lord. And Father, this week as we, we go about our lives, which might be mundane for a lot of us that live in lockdown areas, help us to read your word and to talk to you and, and to share our feelings with you and what we think and where we're at, Lord. But help us to read your word, help us to understand it and to accept it. We pray for our friends, our families, our neighbours, the people we see out the front of our houses who are in lockdown and not coping. We pray that they can be, hear your words, that they can hear and see you and cry out to you, just yeah. like the blind man did, Lord. Sometimes you call us and sometimes we call to you. But, Lord, you always hear, you always listen, and you always accept us. So, Lord, we pray that people will be coming to know you and accepting you. Even though we can't bring them to church, we can't do other things, we can um, certainly bring them online. But, Lord, help us to talk to our neighbours and friends and family about you and not be ashamed yeah. and stand up for you. We thank you, Lord, for this week. We thank you for all the good gifts you give to us. Lord, help us to stay in your love forever. Amen. Thank you, John. Uh, we're going to finish off this time of prayer now by saying the Lord's Prayer together. So let's say these words. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today the things we need. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but rescue us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we have a few notices now. Uh, Clive, do you want to speak to us on the, the first one there? Yeah, so um, we've been having a kid spot uh, during the middle of our service the last term or so. Uh, but in the holidays, we we're going to have a fun afternoon, like a bit of trivia and games and activities so all the kids can see each other because that's kind of one thing that kids are really missing from our kids' church Zoom. We're just really saying hello to each other, having some fun together. So we're going to be having that on the middle Saturday of the school holidays. Um, so that is the 2nd of October uh, at 2 o'clock on the Saturday. So 2 o'clock Saturday, the 2nd of October. Keep that in your diaries. We're going to have a kids' church kind of fun extravaganza on the Saturday, 2 p.m. I also believe that uh, Mike Finch is going to be running a trivia night. Um, that's going to be on a Saturday night. I can't remember. 18th? 18th of is September. Saturday, yeah. Saturday the 18th. I'm going to be sending out an email once I get a bit more information from Mike. Yeah. Um, and if you want to join it, join that trivia night, it'll be really good. It's uh, uh, next Saturday. Yeah, next, next Saturday. Yeah, next Saturday. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, we'll make sure the email goes out. Uh, I think there's also a Facebook uh, invitation, that kind of thing, yep. but it'll be over Zoom. Um, another one, which I sent out an email this morning, uh, and that's about a, uh, a prayer night, which is going to be, I think it's the 22nd um, yep. of uh, this month. It's on a Wednesday night, I know that. Um, and uh, the people from Caring Bar Anglican Church are going to be hosting a prayer night, which the whole diocese has been invited to. Um, and so there's going to be people from all over Sydney who are going to be praying. Um, the, the Archbishop, Kanishka, is going to be speaking, the guest speaker there. Uh, and it's an opportunity to pray or sing as well. Um, but uh, we'll be praying for 
the COVID situation. We'll be praying about Afghanistan and other things. Uh, but it's a time where um, the diocese wants to come together and really concentrate this time of prayer. Mm. So it should be a good night. Yeah. Why don't you check out the uh, email and if you want to, you just click on the link uh, at the right time and you'll be able to join uh, the, the meeting. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about today was um, reopening. Now, in these last, this last week, a few days ago, the New South Wales Premier and the New South Wales Government has talked about uh, the idea of opening up around New South Wales um, once we reach the 70% of double uh, vaccinations. And so once we get to that point, then we're allowed to do all kinds of things to a limited degree and even more things once we get to 80%. What they have said to churches at the moment is that when we reach the 70% mark, then we may be allowed to open, but we would have to have things like making sure we have people QR coding in, uh, I believe probably masks. Um, there'll be definitely no singing and we'll be back under the four square metre rule, um, which means that we'd be you know, back to the strong limitations still. Mm. Um, but the other thing that kind of sounds, you know, it sounds good that we'll be able to get going again. But the concern for me is that it's only for the fully vaccinated, mm. which means that people who are not vaccinated or only have one jab cannot come to church. Now, I've been thinking about the possibility of this issue for the last few weeks. It's something which has come up uh, in my thinking. It's something which I've seen other ministers grappling about online. Mm. And I think it only gets even more complex if the government leaves it up to us to decide. Uh, because no matter what we do, there will be people who will not be able to come to church. And that pains me. It makes me worry. If we say that church is for the vaccinated only, then those who are not vaccinated will miss out. And maybe that means that people won't become Christians. They might not turn to Jesus because they feel like, unlike the blind men today, they realise they could bring nothing to Jesus. Are we saying, no, you have to be vaccinated to come to Jesus? Mm. We want to be careful about that. But if we say that, anyone can come to church, whether they're vaccinated or not, then those who have health issues that they might be wor worried about, uh, the others who might be in a situation where they're just nervous about people who are unvaccinated, then all of a sudden, mm. uh, and maybe they're worried about heavier loads of, of COVID coming into the building, then they'll miss out on church. And I know that some of our elderly people have already said to me, they wouldn't be able to come. So suddenly we have a system which makes a distinction between people. And this could cause significant division among our, uh, within our church. So I thought I would raise this now for a few reasons. Firstly, I want you to see that this is something that Clive, the wardens, the parish council and myself will be grappling with. We've got to work on this and to try and think about what's best. Mm. Uh, and we would really value your prayers uh, as we have to make decisions about this. Secondly, I want you to understand that, uh, or I want you to think about how you might deal with this. If you were in this position, uh, how will you deal with this situation? Try to understand it from the other person's point of view. If you hold one point of view about vaccination, especially this particular vaccination, Try to think about it from the other person's point of view. It's good to do this because, well, the Bible doesn't actually speak about vaccinations. Uh, and so what we have to do is apply our godly wisdom uh, rather than a direct uh, Bible passage or a Bible teaching. And this is a good example for us to teach, to, to teach us how to do this. Thirdly, I want you to think about how you might love one another especially those that you don't agree with. Um, I've already seen online people who are, who are chastising and speaking harshly about those they disagree with, not necessarily from our church, I'm just saying online, just even in amongst Christians. And so we see some people using language that puts the other group down. Um, I want to say that even no matter whether you hold strong views or not, 
we need to be careful about how we portray the other people that we don't agree with uh, and learn how to relate uh, in a good and godly way with those that we don't agree with. So uh, it's all about how we demonstrate our love for one another. Over the next few weeks, months, possibly even years, we don't know how long these issues are going to be with us. The issue of COVID vaccination could be a cause of great division, but we must not let this divide us. We are united in Christ. We are not divided by vaccination. So my friends, I ask that you would continue to think about these things, uh, pray about them, bring them to the Lord, and think about how we relate to one another. Well, we've got a couple of minutes here. Should we sing the blind man song again? Sure, sure. How about that? Why don't we do the blind man song? I'm going to ask Josh if he can find the words, and uh, we'll sing that again. Don't, don't forget the actions. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm doing the actions. <laughs> okay, you're going to do the actions. Are you ready? <clears throat> <clears throat> and don't forget the clapping too. There's a clapping part. The blind man sat by the road and he cried. The blind man sat by the road and he cried. The blind man sat by the road and he cried. He cried, Whoa, show me the way. Show me the truth. Show me the light. The way to go home, baby. Ah, 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 ah. The crippled man sat by the road and he cried. The crippled man sat by the road and he cried. The crippled man sat by the road and he cried. He cried, Whoa, show me the way. Show me the truth. Show me the light. The way to go home, baby. Ah, 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 ah. Jesus stood by the road and he cried. Jesus stood by the road and he cried. Jesus stood by the road and he cried. He cried, Whoa, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. The way to go home, baby. Ah, 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 ah. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, oh, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the light, the way to go home, baby, ah, 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 ah. Jesus. Well, there you go. <laughs> Very good. Good bit of fun. Really fun. Takes me back to my childhood in any way. Yeah, that's it. So let's think about this in our morning tea question, uh, which is um, how have we, when is the time when we have been able to go to Jesus with all of our shame and all of our, um, I guess, sin and rely on him for his mercy? Very good. Let's say these, uh, the words of the grace together. The, the grace, grace of, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the, the love of God, God and, and the, the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with us all, all evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Why don't you hang around for morning tea and uh, you can have a chat with people and even about the question that we just spoke about. Bye, everybody. See you. Good to see you.